Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Talented FK. And like most of you requested, you guys requested I should do a high end retouching from start to finish. So today I'll be teaching you guys how to how to retouch this image from start to finish or how I retouch my images from start to finish. So we'll be using this image. So if you want to see how I retouch this image from this to this, so you should stay on this channel. But then I'm going to be breaking down this image into three parts. The first part, the part one will be how to remove blemishes and liquefy, which is my process of retouching each time I start to retouch. The first thing I, would, I, I normally do is take out the blemishes and do a little of liquefying if the liquefying is needed. Then the second part will be macro dodging and burning. Then the third part will be um, color grading. So my retouching process, I do pro-solid retouching where I tend to keep the skin natural, organic, and authentic. So I use 90% of macro dodging and burning technique. Then I use 10% of frequency separation technique. Why I use the uh, why I use frequency separation, 10% of frequency separation is because frequency separation gives me that form for me to remove blemishes without affecting the color and for me to um, correct the colors without affecting the texture of the image. If Then if you don't know anything about frequency separation here on YouTube, there are tons of tutorials teaching and explaining what frequency separation is all about. I would advise you go and check those tutorials out. So without any further ado, let's jump right to this. The part one of this is how to remove blemishes. So like I said, the first thing I will do is to create my frequency separation. Out of the 10% of frequency separation technique that I use, I will start using 5%, which I will use the 5% to remove the blemishes. Later on in the video, you will see where I'm going to use the rest 5% to make it 10. So um, I'm going to go to my action panel. Sorry, I like I've used this for frequency separation before, so let me just do something else. Okay, let me just do this. Alright, okay. Here now I'm going to use my frequency separation technique. I'm going to click my action. My radius is 14. If you want to know why use the radius of 14, like I said earlier, check tutorial out here on YouTube on what is frequency separation. So I'm going to use okay. Then I have a group name frequency separation. So I'm going to open my group. Here, the high texture, la the high FS layer is normally the texture layer. I normally rename this to texture, but not all the time. So I just, for the purpose of this tutorial. So here I'm going to rename it color, which is the low frequency layer. So the high frequency layer contains all the blemishes and the texture, while the uh, low, frequency, uh, low frequency layer contains the colors. So I'm going to select the high frequency, um, the texture layer, pick my clone stamp tool, make sure my sample is at current, my opacity is 100 and my flow is 100. So I'll begin to get rid of some of the blemishes here. As we can see, she don't have a lot, so I'm just going to use my clone stamp tool to sample. And this is how I'm going to take out blemishes so I'll take uh, some of the blemishes I don't think I'll be skipping anything because I want you guys to have an idea and see how I do my retouching from start to finish or do you think I should just skip some part Okay, she doesn't have much. So the more time you take in removing blemishes, the more clean the skin will start to appear. So um, every retouch, every clean retouch or clean skin work you see out there starts from removing the blemishes rightly. So the more time you pay attention to take out blemishes you don't need, the more clean the skin will appear and the more easier your work will be. So, like I said, I'm just going to show you in depth of how I retouch. So normally, 
if you see this image right here, I do take my time to retouch. So here it is. I'm going to let the, I'm going to stop with the blemish removal so you have an idea how I remove these blemishes. I think I'm going to link down this image so that you guys can download and practice. If there's anything you want to see me do, let me know. So here it is, I'm done removing the blemishes. So I'm done removing the blemishes. Let me zoom in so that you see a quick before and after. So here is the before and here is the after. Let me zoom in more. Here is the before and here is the after. So I just got rid of some of the blemishes. So then I'll close my frequency separation layer. Then I'm going to hit Command E on Mac OS. Then on PC is Control E. So Command or Control E. Then I'm, I'll match everything together into one layer. Then I'm going to rename this as blemishes. So here, this is the first 5% out of the 10% of frequency separation technique we are using. The first one is just to remove the blemishes. Like I said earlier, with frequency separation, you have your like your mind will be calm. You can remove blemishes without affecting the color of the image. I hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say. So just like we did. Then the next thing we are going to do is to liquefy. As in, is there anything for us to liquefy here in this image? Um, okay, let's just liquefy here a bit, just push it down a bit. So we can make a duplicate of this, or we can make a duplicate, it depends. We can make a duplicate, then um, rename this liquefy. Or let's rename it LQF, that's liquefy. Then I'll go to filter, then I'll go to liquefy. So it's going to open up. Then here, I normally don't want to liquefy much, I don't want to change uh, the the shape of how somebody is looking that much, I just want to make a little changes. And whenever I do much, liquefying here has an option called reconstruction. So I did down this reconstruction, I will, I can tend to bring down the opacity of what of the changes I've made. So you can see here, here is my um, my settings. My pressure is normally 21, then my density is 20. I've been using this for long. So I'm going to pick the warp to here. Then we are just going to push in here a bit. Just try to straighten the shoulder a bit, but not much. Let's just push this hard cheek inside a little. Like I said, we don't want to make that change that is going to look very obvious. So I think there's no much to do. Then just push in these lips up a little. Yeah, so I, okay, let's just bring here down a bit. So, Okay, here a little. So this is what we'll, we'll be doing here. We don't need to do much. So here is the before and here is the after, before, before and after. So like I was saying, if I go overboard with it, I have this option here called reconstruct. You can come to reconstruct and bring down the opacity of whatever I've done. So, but now no need for that because we didn't do much. So I'm going to hit okay. Then, I can decide to match this down with the frequency uh, with the blemish layer. Then let me just match them down so it will just be on one layer. So I'm going to hit Command E or Control E on PC to match it together. So here it is. Here is our before and here is our after. Our before and our after. So after this, what we are going to do next? Let's just add one more thing to this part one. Then the next video will be about dodging and burning. So we are done removing the blemishes. Now we want to prepare for doing macro dotting and boiling the graph. We have removed the blemishes, we have done liquefy. So what I want to do now to prepare this image for frequency um for macro dotting and boiling, there are things I, I need to do. There are things I need to do to that will help me to dodge and burn better and correctly. So the first thing is to create a black and white visual aid layer, which is a check layer. Then the other thing is to create a blur reference layer which is going to blur the texture and give me that photo for me to see the highlight and shadows. And to create a blur reference layer, all you have to do is to duplicate your blemish layer. Then you rename this as blur ref. This is blur ref. I'll call it blur ref, which, is, which, which means a blur reference layer. 
what this layer will do is that we are just going to blow out the texture of the image. So, but before that, we have to, we we have to convert. I will have to convert this image to a smart object layer. You can go and check on YouTube what a smart object layer is. A smart object layer. Let me just explain this real quick. A smart ob object layer is a layer that will give you the forum for you to re-edit whatever you have done. So, for example, if I right click right here and convert this to a smart object layer, so it will load. So here you see is a smart object layer. So whatever I do, let me apply the blur, Gaussian blur. So let me apply a radius of four. So you see, or let me apply a radius of eight. So you see, I like the image is blurred. The texture of the image is being blurred out. So I'll click OK. So imagine if I notice that, okay, this radius of eight I just entered is too much. For the kind for how I want to blur the texture. So instead of me going back to filter, I can see I have the blur, uh, the sorry, the Gaussian blur icon here. I can just double click, then it will take me directly to the radius, so I can change it to whatever number I will want to change it to. So I'll click on OK. Okay. So now the next thing we're going to do now is to create a check layer, a black and white check layer. And to create that, there are different tutorials on how to create a black and white check layer. I, I have one here, so you should watch that. I have one here on my channel on how to create the, like the perfect way to create a black and white check layer. And there are different type of black and white check layer. The last video I did explain three different type of black and white check layer that will help you to dodge to do macro dodging and burning correctly. So that is that for this part one we created a blur reference layer so in the part two we'll be creating our macro dodging and burning layer then we'll be macro dodging and burning this image for the better result that result is going to help us to transform this image into this image so see you next in the part two peace